This is going to be hard because I have to try to be quiet and I know the lighting is not great in here but this is really the only room that I have any privacy in right now so <clears throat> I'll talk as loud as I can and hopefully I can uh, fix it in the editing process. Um, I just wanted to come on um, and explain what's happening uh, with my son because I know that um, over the past nine months or so um, there's been a lot of questions and uh, I don't even know how to really answer all of them because I feel um, that we were kind of led astray at certain points um, during this whole ordeal with my son. Um, but in case anybody else can learn anything from this, uh, what I'm always trying to do is trying to take a situation, something that occurs to me, um, if I find something that I find hardship with in my life, the, I want to try to find something positive out of that. So if I can take something that I've gone through or something that my family members have gone through and try to relate it to people, other people out there or other clients that I've seen or friends or family or whatever, then I feel like there's some kind of good coming out of something that's potentially rotten. So um, you have to bear with me through this video because my brain is scattered right now um, and it has been over the past few weeks. As soon as September 1st hit, um, I had this feeling of dread because I knew that this surgery was coming up. Um, I, we've had the surgery booked for three months now. So we've known that the surgery was on September 26th for about three months now. But this whole process started back last November. Um, so I'll start there. So last November, um, my son was just brushing his teeth one night and uh, he noticed a lump in his bottom jaw, right behind his bottom two front teeth. And he called me upstairs and I looked at it and it didn't look right. Um, it looked almost maybe like some kind of infection um, but I wasn't sure, but it didn't even look like that. It just didn't look right. It looked like something was coming up out of the gum line um, and it was about the size of a small grape at that, probably the size of a blueberry is a good example. Show, that's what was showing above the gum line. So he wasn't in any pain and he didn't really feel anything. Um, well, he must have felt something because he looked. So from that point on, um, that night, uh, sorry, that morning, the, the following morning, we called his dentist and everything went really quickly from that point on. Um, she saw him first thing in the morning and from that point, that very same day, we were given an appointment with a specialist in um, Burlington. And this specialist, it was an oral surgeon um, that is part of... Um, it's part of Milton, anyway, part of this uh, oral surgery organization. Went to see him, um, Ethan had a 3D x-ray immediately that day, and then immediately from that appointment, we were sent to Milton, um, and we were, we were seen by Dr. Cuddy, which is the surgeon that's actually doing the um, surgery on the 26th. We saw him that same day. So in one day, we saw Ethan's dentist, and two oral surgeons. So if that kind of is indicative of how serious this situation was at that point, you don't normally get appointments that quickly. Usually takes weeks and weeks and weeks. So um, everything happened that day. From that point on, uh, Ethan was booked for, he, we went up to Mount Sinai and started getting um, um, steroid injections right into the site of where the tumor was. Now, keep in mind, this last November, the 3D x-ray showed that potentially four teeth, but most likely three teeth, were going to be lost because they were not hanging on to any kind of jawbone at that time. My son has um, a fixed retainer on the back of those four front teeth um, from his orthodontics. So, um, that's all that's been holding those teeth in place uh, and the gums. Um, so anyways, three to four teeth at that time. So we went and we did as Dr. Cuddy had instructed and um, 
excuse me, I'm not going to edit any of this. So if you see me burp, that's how it's going to be. <laughs> excuse me. Um, so we went and um, every Tuesday for months on end, my son was getting uh, steroid injections, uh, medical grade steroid injections by the surgeon into this tumor that was in uh, his front teeth. So on his bottom jawline. Um, what they originally thought, though, I should back up, they originally thought that it was an aneurysm. Um, so anyways, that's just kind of backing up. Now I'm remembering that. They originally thought it was an aneurysm. Once they did a biopsy, that's right, they realized that it was a group of cells and it was a, a group of cells, cells that were um, structured in such a way that uh, apparently it's very rare. Um, blood vessels and nerves and everything are kind of um, joined in with this they're calling it a, a tumor now so it was it went from being called an aneurysm to something else and then a tumor a lesion which is I mean I they're all kind of like a, an umbrella of the same type of thing except aneurysm that's completely different once they found out that it wasn't um, something arterial or something that was gonna burst then they had to look at it in a different way anyways so now going forward so we were taking Ethan every week, every Tuesday, for these steroid, inj steroid injections. Well, after months of doing this, or even weeks of doing this, every Tuesday, going up to Toronto and coming back, um, he was getting side effects. He was feeling really crappy. He was getting flu-like side effects, um, mood swings. He already deals with anxiety. Um, I don't want to say too much because I don't know what friends are watching. Um, he's 16 years old, so I don't want to say too much about his situation, but he already deals with some things. So the steroids were, were just accentuating things that even a normal 16 year old is feeling at that time. I mean, he's going through puberty, he's feeling all kinds of things. Um, he's got the most testosterone in his body at that time, this time, than he'll ever have again in his life at one point. It's said between the ages of I don't know, nine and, oh, well, it can be as early as nine years old to, you know, 17 years old. Boys have the most testosterone going through their body at that, that time frame in their life than they ever will at the rest of their lives. So you mix in steroids, even though it's medical grade, it's not like your street drug crap steroids, whatever. Um, he was still getting the acne. He was, he was, it was just, he felt crappy and he was missing a ton of school. So... Um, we at this point thought that um, he was going to be having surgery probably in January or February. Um, so it was it was suggested to us from the school just because he was missing so much school because of him not feeling well that maybe he be uh, homeschooled or have home instruction. So we agreed to that um, and you know we thought well he's going to be off um, rehabilitating from surgery anyways. So during this time, um, the doctor, because of these side effects that he was having, um, we discussed it with Dr. Cuddy and he had said, okay, well, we're gonna try a different drug. Um, so he sent us to, this, this is, this is probably going back to January, January, I'm thinking. It's such a blur, I don't know now. Um, so he sent us to McMaster um, and we saw the head of the oncology and hematology ward, I think. Basically the cancer ward. Um, her name was uh, Dr. Portwine. We saw her at McMaster Children's Hospital. And what they recommended at the time was a drug also to shrink the tumor. Having said this, the tumor is now growing because Ethan wasn't getting these steroid shots. So there was a, there was a time frame between Dr. Cuddy stopping the steroid injections to when we had the appointment at McMaster. And this this tumor or lesion, it's now being classified as a tumor. Even, oh, I should say, um, it's benign. But, and thank God for that. Um, but, so, I mean, there's no disease involved here. Um, thank God. I can't even imagine that. But having said that, um, it's just, this whole thing is just such a, a, a freak, not accident, it's just such a freak incident 
how this even came about. Um, so anyways, there was this time frame where I feel like the ball was dropped. Um, he wasn't getting steroid injections to shrink the tumor. So now the tumor was growing. So as this tumor grows, even what's showing above his gum line is not indicative at all as to what it's doing to the jaw underneath. It's growing. It has been growing underneath where we haven't seen it probably for years because Ethan's last x-ray was three years ago uh, before he had braces. So we don't know how long this thing has been growing. So anyways, they dropped the ball in my opinion. Um, we, were going, we, we were going by instruction of Dr. Cuddy, wait, put on a waiting list to see this Dr. Portwine. I had signed, uh, during this time, I had signed papers um, so that he was all ready to go for surgery. So in my head, I'm thinking that, okay, um, they're booking surgery at this time, even though we're, we're waiting to see this specialist. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> um, we tried to, we talked to Dr. Portwine and her associates or her team at um, McMaster Children's Hospital and they wanted to put him on a steroid, or uh, not a steroid, um, a cancer drug. And I don't remember what it was called right now, um, but it's well known. And he was, he was going to lose his hair um, and it was gonna produce the same type of, well, even worse according to what they had told us. Um, the chances of him having flu-like symptoms and losing his hair were high. The percentage was high. So on top of, you know, him missing semester two of grade 10, so he's not getting the socialization that he needs, which is important with Ethan. If you know any history about Ethan, um, the socialization with any kid at that age, but especially a child who has, he was diagnosed with autism when he was three. It's always been high functioning, but socialization is very important for him. Um, especially because it doesn't come naturally to him. So missing that part of his life, um, missing being with his friends at school, missing all the normalcy that goes along with, you know, if you can call grade 10 normal, it certainly wasn't normal for me, but he's missing out on all of that stuff. So having to lose his hair and go through the flu-like symptoms and all that, first of all, it wasn't approved by the ministry. So it was sent through by uh, Dr. Portwine and it wasn't, it wasn't approved, so it was just gonna be more waiting. So at this point, looking at his mouth, the tumor is now protruding through the front of his teeth. Um, so to see him and to talk to him, you wouldn't notice it, but he notices it, and we know that this thing is growing and taking over his jaw. And also during this time, um, another 3D x-ray was taken and was, show, was showing that now, okay, now, as opposed to him losing maybe three or four teeth, now he's going to lose maybe nine teeth. Now, now within this you know five, four or five month period, um, this this tumor has become so aggressive that it's it's taken over that much more of his jaw. So basically, on the X-ray, your jaw comes together like this. Your teeth are all rooted into it. His jaw is so compromised that he can't. Well, he could, he can't now, obviously, but he couldn't participate in any kind of rough play. If he were to fall or bump himself at all, his jaw was so compromised and so fragile that he was at risk for breaking his jaw at the slightest thing. So being a mom and um, just being aware of that all the time, always being, I mean, I, I'm a nervous mom as it is and Having to worry about his jaw being broken if he trips, you know, any, anything little trips down the stairs, I don't know. If you're a mom, you know some of the things that go through your head on a daily basis, let alone having to deal with this type of thing. He's, another thing I should say is he's been eating, been eating baby-like food for the past, well, for since January because every time he would try to eat something and chew with those front teeth, it would bleed. He would wake up in the morning with blood on his pillow, um, almost every morning. So 
uh, we rule we at that point we started giving him you know just really mushy food um, and it's been that way like I said since January um, so I mean it's little things and I want to say right here I should have said it at the beginning of the video I'm not looking for attention with this I'm not looking for any of us to have sympathy um, I don't want to anybody to think that I'm trying to get sympathy by by doing this video I just want people I want to bring some light as to what's happening because I do run a business and um, I think it's important for people to know you know I don't think I've been giving my best I don't think I've I've been myself lately <laughs> um, and to not put a hundred percent into my passion bothers me but most of all there's so many like if you're what if Ethan was I mean this could have happened when he was little you have to kind of check your kids' bodies. Um, if this, I mean, and even if you do that, there's things that you're, you're never ever gonna know. I mean, but if if he was like four years old, and you know, a four year old may not have the um, insight to kind of well, they're not going to. They're not gonna look in their mouth and go, and and point to something that's not normal in their mouth. Whereas a fourteen year old or a fifteen year old notices something like that. So just trying to bring awareness and I'm trying to explain what's going on. I don't, I really appreciate everybody's comments and everybody's um, prayers and um, your well wishes. They mean so much. They really mean a lot. I don't even have any words to tell you how much they mean. Um, I am being strong for him. A lot of people are saying, you know, don't, don't let him see that. <laughs> Don't let them see how much stress you're under because I have to be strong for him and that's what I'm doing. And I've always done that with Ethan. Um, he doesn't know how much this is affecting me. There's no way he does. And I'm not gonna let him see how much it's affecting me. But anybody who's out there, anybody who's a parent, any I mean, everybody's got something going on, right? Every There's stress in everyone's life. But when something like this when you don't have control over something like this, that's just, it's eating away at a part of my son's body. And we're at the mercy of waiting lists and trying out drugs. Like he almost, almost felt like he was a guinea pig at one point. It was like, why are we putting him on more drugs that more chemicals instead of, why didn't it get taken out in, in November? Why didn't we just take the tumor out in November when it was the size of, it was probably the size of a grape at that time. It was showing about the size of a blueberry above his gum line, but at that, at that time it was the size of maybe a, a large grape. Why wasn't it taken out then? And I know it's not helpful to, the hindsight's not helpful. The only way it's helpful is for me to put out information like this and hopefully somebody else is gonna learn from it and ask questions. And I mean, this is the whole thing is we did ask questions. And I do trust the surgeon. These are these surgeons that are working with him, especially Dr. Cuddy. He's a world renowned surgeon and I, I have faith in him. And his bedside manner is second to none. This, this doctor is just amazing. Um, the doctor that we met on Friday, Dr. Delmeda, he doesn't have as great of a bedside manner as Dr. Cuddy, um, but I think we just really lucked out with Dr. Cuddy. Um, but anyways, I forgot what I was saying. I just wish they had. I just wish they had instead of been injecting my son with chemicals for six months. Why didn't they just do the surgery to take it out? And that was a question on on Friday. Even Dr. Del Delmeda asked us why didn't you want to try the drug that you were offered at McMaster and I, I told him I said well first of all we weren't approved so it meant more waiting second of all I told him about the side effects that Ethan was having with the steroids and that he had been through enough and um, he questioned that and he said you know the, those aren't he, there are no side effects from those steroids and my husband and I looked at each other and we know the side effects that 
my son was going through. I mean, if the acne wasn't enough of a side effect, my son had no acne before he was given these steroids. So he was given these steroid treatments for about four, five months, four months. I might be getting some of this timeline wrong. But when he was being given it once every week, his skin was clear like mine and he, he broke out everywhere. I don't know if he's listening or not. Hang on. Okay, sorry, just had to check. Um, so he broke out everywhere. And once those injections stopped, his skin went back to normal. So it wasn't just um, a coincidence, you know, with his age or whatever, getting acne. It was, it was the, what was happening on the surface of his skin. If that was any indication as to what, how he was feeling and what was going on on the inside of his body. So, I mean, I felt like we were kind of being questioned a little bit by this doctor, but we had just met him. So, I mean, I can't really go by his personality. I've got to just trust in his um, professionalism and um, his expertise. And if he's working with Dr. Cuddy, Dr. Cut, I trust Dr. Cuddy and he's told us that, uh, that this is a really good surgeon and he works with him quite a bit. So this surgeon, this Dr. Delmeda, is going to be, <laughs> sorry, I'm a mess. Uh, he's going to be doing the bone grafting. So he's going to be taking the bone from two places in my son's leg while Dr. Cuddy is working from the mouth. There's gonna be an incision made here. It's gonna be pulled up this way and then also scooped from inside the mouth so that um, they make sure that they get all of the tumor because there's a 50% chance of this tumor coming back. Um, I need to back up a bit though. I know this video is already 22 minutes. Um, anyways, so we went through a waiting period where this, this, this uh, tumor was just aggressive and it was growing. So we've waited so long for this surgery while this thing has been taking over my son's face. Um, I lost my train of thought. Hang on. <clears throat> this video is so long. It's not even going to upload to YouTube. I know it. Um, so what's happening now is instead of losing from November, instead of him losing about four teeth, he's going to be losing about 12 teeth. Um, what was before, what they were trying to um, make happen with the steroid injections and with this other medication, they're trying to minimize the size of the tumor so that the eventual surgery would be less invasive. Well, now it's very invasive. It's a major surgery, which was pounded into our heads on Friday by Dr. Delmuda. I already know, knew it was a major surgery. I understand they want to be frank and they want to tell you everything so that there's nothing left unexpected when the surgery date comes. Um, so 12 hour plus surgery, um, he's going to have to have a, a, a tracheotomy done. That's where they put a hole in, in your trachea to let him breathe because the swelling is going to be so much that he's not going to be able to breathe through his throat. So um, he's going to have to be fed through a tube through his nose. He'll be in ICU for a little bit, probably four days, hopefully not any longer than that. And then he's going to be in Mount Sinai for another two weeks. And um, so I'll be up there with him. Um, uh, they've got they're, Dr. Delmeda, I guess, is going to be do, and Dr. Cuddy are going to be doing. Um, they have to sew together like these microscopic blood vessels in Ethan's mouth once the tumor is taken out, and once the bone grafting is done. There's also a plate that's going to be put in. Um, they have to do it through a microscope and sew these tiny, tiny, tiny blood vessels together, which takes a really, really long time. And he's going to lose feeling, I, I posted all this in writing, but he's going to be losing feeling, like they're pretty much told us he's going to be losing feeling in his chin permanently. Um, hope, hopefully that could come back. Nerves are kind of a funny thing. Um, sometimes it could take years and years, but he could, 
that feeling could come back. I know that myself just through knowing a little bit about an anatomy. I don't know that much, but that type of thing I do know. Um, so I think that's it. Um, so what started out as something that I just thought was maybe a gum infection has turned into this major, major, major thing. And one thing people ask me all the time is, what could have caused this? Um, so what we were asked at the beginning was, did he fall? Did he have some kind of trauma to his chin at any point? Like even when he was little. And we can't remember anything. Uh, I don't ever remember, he, Ethan doesn't ever remember having a, a major blow to his chin. Um, the only trauma that could have been caused was, and this is probably, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say it. His orthodontist is not, tra she's trained in orthodontics or orthodontistry, whatever you would call it, but she is not an orthodontist. She's a dentist who has some training in that field. And whether his teeth were moved too quickly with the braces, that's the only trauma that we could think of. Um, so I don't know what to do about that. I, there's not any, it's not, that's just something that we don't really need. It, what's done is done. We don't know. We don't, I don't know if there's any way we could ever prove that that's what happened. It could also have been something that was just there at birth and it just decided to grow during, during puberty just because of what I said about so many hormones going through your body at that point. That's what Dr. Cuddy had told us and from what I've read too about just tumors in general. So this is the first of many surgeries that are going to take place. This is, the, this is a major one. Hopefully, and there's so many risks. They had said that, you know, that the grafting may not take. Um, I mean, there's risks with every surgery, with every restructuring surgery, with, with anything like that. Just gotta hope that the percentages, that he's one of the lucky ones, that, you know, everything goes well, everything goes right. Um, and I am, I'm, I'm confident that everything is gonna go okay. He's a strong kid. He's physically strong. We've, he's mentally strong. He's ready for the surgery, which is a huge thing. He just wants to get it over with. Um, but there's going to be many, many, many subsequent surgeries to follow next year throughout the process of throughout, throughout next year because um, he's going to lose about 12 teeth with this surgery. And they're going to keep needing to re they're going to they're going to need to keep rebuilding his jaw and replacing teeth. Um, so they can't do everything all at once. It's just too much trauma to the body. They have to do that in stages. So it's gonna be a long road and that's what the doctors have told us. And when they tell you that, you know that it's going to be. Um, so anyways, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I just, I wanna thank everybody for being so nice and for all the support. Um, It really means a lot. I won't be on social media. Um, this is one of the reason. This is the reason why I went out of that competition earlier, uh, a couple months ago, was because I knew that um, I wouldn't be able to put the focus into it. And even though I've been posting, you know, my posts are happy. I'm marketing myself, but this has been a stressor for a long time for me. And as a surgery date, and I'll, as we have these, you know these bi-monthly appointments in Toronto that go on and it's just, it's been a really, really stressful time. I know it's not cancer and I know it's not life threatening, but having said that, it's just so much pain and so much, uh, so much that my son has to go through that I wish I could go through for him. Nobody wants their kids to have to go through pain or go through anything like this. And there's always that fear in the back of my mind that even though it's not cancer, it's even that word drives me nuts. And I can't imagine the parents that have to deal. I can't imagine the parents that have to deal with that. But I know that it, that's not what it is, but that's always in the back of my mind. And I've been told by the doctor that it's irrational thinking. 
it's always in the back of my mind that it could turn into that. <laughs> and I, it just because this tumor has all of the characteristics of cancer, it just isn't. Thank God. Thank God it isn't. So we just had, we need to get through this. I need to get through this and be strong so that he can be strong. And, and I'm sure I just, after this, this is what's happening. To, I'm getting stressed out now. I'm going to end the video. Just need to get through this surgery. Everything's going to be fine. I just won't be on social media and I won't be at work. Um, so if I don't answer um, messages, my so I, if I'm not on social media, I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on Messenger, I'm not on Instagram, I'm not on my email, I'm not on, I'm not text messaging, I'm not, you know, all of these messages that I'm usually very involved in, I, I won't be there. Um, and I want to thank everybody for your support and for everything, all the kindness. I'm so, so, so grateful for it. And it's really, really helping get me through this. Um, I'm going to end the video here because I'm a little bit of a mess. <laughs> but thank you all. I hope that if you find anything on your kids, if your kids come to you finding a lump or finding something that's just not right, anything, take them to the doctor. Get them there the next day. You never, never know what it could be. You never know what's showing on externally, what that could be indicating internally. So just take them to the doctor and if you don't get the answers that you want, go to somebody that is going to give you the answers that you want. That's all. Um, sounds cheesy, but I love you guys for all your comments. I'm not trying to play the victim. I'm just telling you guys what's happening and why I'm not going to be around. Thanks.